Welcome, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. It's nice to see that more and more people are coming online. So I suggest that we uh, wait for some more uh, minutes. And uh, meanwhile, uh, we are waiting. Uh, let me introduce you. Uh, Mr. Hogul Park, uh, one of the creators, the mastermind uh, behind these meetings. Thank you, Mr. Park, for uh, having this great idea to calling together uh, this meeting every month. And um, it's also my pleasure uh, to introduce uh, my colleagues, uh, Hanna Shin uh, from Korea. Uh, can we see Hanna? Hannah's screen uh, for a moment. Hannah, are you with us? Yes. Okay. Yes, it's great to see you, uh, Hannah. You. How are you today? How are you today? Afternoon. You are in Seoul, I guess. It's afternoon, four o'clock there. How are you? Yes, here is the, the four p.m. So we are very doing fine now. How All about right. how, how about the other countries? Uh, yes, uh, I, would I would like to ask everyone who's already with us uh, to please put in the chat, uh, where are you from? Where are you sitting uh, at the moment? So we can see how many countries uh, are represented. And please also share uh, your introduction shortly if you want. Uh, you can share links and you can use the chat uh, to post uh, questions, comments, and uh, whatever information you would like to share uh, with this international global STEAM network. And to continue the introduction of the hosts of today, today I have a great honor to introduce uh, my friend who is uh, in the USA, uh, in Fresno, if I'm, if I'm right. His name is um, Dr. Christopher Brownell, who is the uh, Associate Professor of the Fresno Pacific University. Chris, could you could could you show your camera? Could you say some words to us? I sure can. Um, greetings, everyone. Is my video going through just fine? Yes, I hope. Perfectly. Wonderful. So it's um a, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, yes, I'm in California, in Central California. Right now, it is. Uh, 2300 hours or 11 p.m. So it's, it's, uh, this will be a fun time. If I get a little bit silly by the end of the evening, it's just because it's been a long day for me. Um, I think you brought me on for comic relief anyway. So, um, that's Chris, uh, we are all looking forward to that moment when you go silly uh, during the meeting. So please, 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 please. I, I hope that uh, this will be like a fun time uh, for all of us. So you are warmly welcome uh, to <laughs> be, be silly also, like we all uh, sometimes. And uh, it's also my great pleasure to mention many, many of our partners so let me use uh, one more second while people are coming online uh, to uh, introduce uh, our partners. Uh, I should mention uh, CMEO, uh, which is a great uh, educational uh, center of STEM and mathematics in Southeast Asia. Um, and they are also running uh, QTEP, quality improvement of teachers and uh, educational personnel. Uh, in the region, and uh, we also have um, Dr. Faridan Rajan's uh, university uh, supporting us, Sebelas Maret uh, University, and of course, uh, Professor uh, Christopher Brown's university, Fresno Pacific uh, University is uh, here too, and of course, uh, Johannes Kepler University from Austria, and GeoGebra, and 4D Frame and the International um, Asso Association for the Advancement of STEAM and Experience Workshop is all uniting forces uh, to promote uh, these meetings. So, uh, and uh, I already mentioned, and you could also see the introduction uh, from the first speaker, who is going to be Dr. Farida Nurhashanah. 
Uh, she's the lecturer and researcher in mathematics education department, teacher training and education faculty at the Sebalas Maret University, which is one of our partner, as you heard. She's also the deputy director for program in CMO for KITAP in mathematics. And she's also the founder of Kid Scientist Corner, which is a website, kidscientist.corner.com. Uh, which is a website that provides resources for learning mathematics and science for partners, teachers, and students in Indonesia. Uh, Dr. Farida Nurashanak will be your first uh, speaker uh, during the day. How are you, Farida? Hello, Dr. Christor. Can you hear my voice clearly? Yes, we hear you and see you clearly. How are you doing? Okay, it's uh, doing very well right now, but here in my home, we have a uh, quite heavy rain. I hope that it will not uh, interfere the internet connections. I see. Hello, yes. greetings for everyone. Good afternoon from Indonesia. Thank you. We, we trust uh, that uh, also the element will be good to us. And also uh, the situation will be resolved uh, in, in, in your country. And uh, let me also greet um, <clears throat> our other speakers. Speakers. Uh, so let me introduce Dr. Cheng King Wing Kin uh, from Hong Kong. He's a freelance educator, author, and researcher, and a curriculum developer in the University of Hong Kong. He's author of the book "Having Fun with Dice: Learning Mathematics with Fun for Primary School Kids." And he's not only an excellent teacher and professional expert in education, but also a proud father of a very talented children, or at least a child. I don't know uh, is, if Claire has also sisters or brothers, but anyway, we know all Claire who joined these meetings already and also the uh, uh, STEAM uh, conferences. Uh, Claire uh, is a, a school student uh, also in Hong Kong and also running her own YouTube channel and she's already a great influencer in the STEAM education world. He is running, she's running fantastic uh, projects and I think we'll hear about it from her. How are you uh, Claire and Cheng Wing Kim today? Hello, are you with everyone. Um... I'm Chen Wenqin from Hong Kong. I'm happy to share with all of you. Um, now, I think Claire is having school at the moment and she will be joining us, uh, I think, uh, in about an hour later. And she will be sharing um, about um, her, her making or her creation with 4D frame. Uh, I think it would be quite fun. Uh, because you, uh, all of you, you can um, see something from a learner's perspective. Um, you can you you can ask her question. You can, uh, and I think um, she will do a uh, live demonstration. So if you would like to ask her to try out something, please do so later on um, during the Q and A section. Thank you a lot, uh, Dr. Cheng Wing Kim. Uh, Yes, uh, even influencers, even steam influencers have some duties in the world and especially what else it could be than learning. So we must respect that Claire is in the school and I'm sure that she's doing fantastic things in the school too. And uh, we are looking forward to have her also in the recess time, uh, maybe. So I also mentioned this recess because Actually, Chris is also a prolific author. He has a book called Math Recess. Chris, uh, could you please share us uh, with some inspiring idea in this time of the day what uh, came to you from your fantastic book, uh, this Math Recess? Let, please inspire us uh, before, before uh, the seminar program starts, okay? Wow. So what during your journey uh, in, in these mat matrices around the world, what you were pleasurably enjoyed. Wow, you're putting me on the spot there, Christoph, but uh, that's that's not unusual. So um, math recess, the, the book is, is all about approaching math from a playful attitude, with a playful attitude and a playful um, uh, expectation that, that mathematics is... Uh, a joy to learn, and a, and it ought to be taught in in that way. Um, so 
Um, yes, uh, that's, we'll, we'll talk more about that in, in coming days. We hope to, um, I hope to be able to present more about the book at a future uh, seminar. Absolutely. We must have a session on uh, uh, math recess, and uh, we also need to face uh, to the STEAM recess uh, soon, I guess. So uh, yes. this, this fun and playfulness learning projects should be continued, and it should be continued together. And I'm sure that you are already all excited uh, to uh, hear uh, the first talk. Uh, which will be uh, a very interesting uh, uh, talk uh, from uh, Dr. Farida Nurhashanak. Uh, she will talk about flexibility on STEM toward STEAM, teacher professional development program during the challenging time. So I'm sure that uh, this talk uh, will have a lot of relevant uh, thoughts, re very relevant ideas uh, which you might also want to consider to uh, implement uh, in your own practice, in your own context. So I'm really looking forward to this talk, especially that um, on some ways I was also involved uh, at least to some stories uh, what uh, Farida uh, Nurashanak uh, will share with us, because I had the pleasure uh, to participate uh, in one of the training programs, not only one of them. I even led a workshop when I wasn't there. So, uh, okay, le let me not explain it uh, further to you, but uh, there were many things happening. But the main things what were happening to me that even during this pandemic uh, time, even that I couldn't be there uh, personally to meet uh, with these wonderful Southeastern Asian teachers, but we had a very special relationship started uh, through uh, these, even this screen. Uh, and I, I, I managed to make a lot of hands-on workshops uh, together with them. Can you imagine that? So doing hands-on workshop online, I was pretty worried uh, about this, but it turned out to be a great success. And we even danced together for the Baby Shark song. Uh, to have some more uh, blood into our brain vessels and being more creative and more free. And actually, that was a really uh, some moments when I felt free to dance with <clears throat> a hundred of uh, uh, wonderful teachers on the song of Baby Shark. And I just learned uh, in another seminar, there are many seminars, webinars in these days, uh, from a researcher from Oxford that uh, a cognitive uh, psychologist, that the rhythm of baby shark is basically a very specific pattern which uh, help you uh, that, that your brain reacting. So this is not uh, just a coincidence that uh, this song is very popular and very popular among children. So the pattern uh, has something to do with the stimulation of the brain. So it was a, a total surprise uh, for me uh, when I uh, heard uh, this in a completely other seminar. Okay, let me not uh, steal uh, more time uh, from our speakers. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Farida Nohashanak, uh, please uh, share your screen and jump into your talk. And meanwhile, dear audience, please put your questions, comments, and everything into the chat line. Okay? So, oh, first off. Yes. Uh, sorry, but uh, the, before the starting, the, I'd like to recommend uh, Mr. Park to give the greetings message. Uh, yes. Yes, please. Yeah. 안녕하세요. 이번 세미나를 크리스토프 박사님과 크리스 교수님과 함께 준비한 4D 프레임을 발명한 박호걸입니다. 이번 3차 세미나에 참여하신 여러분을 진심으로 환영합니다. 강연을 해 주실 인도네시아 어, 파리다 박사님과 홍콩의 챙, 챙윈킹 박사님과 그의 딸에게 감사를 드립니다. 이번 세미나에 예상보다 많은 인원이 등록해 주시고 참여해 주신 것을 이 세미나를 통해 새로운 교육과 정보가 공유되기를 기대하는 것 같습니다. 아무쪼록 이 세미나가 의미 있는 시간이 되기를 바랍니다. 감사합니다. Hello everyone. I hope I found you. In the of I have co-organized today's seminar together with Dr. Christoph Benivisi and Professor Cronel. 
I would like to give a warm welcome to everyone who have participated in today's event. Also, I would like to thank Dr. Farida Nurasana from Indonesia and Dr. Cheng Wing Kin and his daughter Claire from Hong Kong for becoming the speakers of today's seminar. I'm very glad to see so many audiences have registered and joined today's event, much more than what we, what we have expected. I hope we can share great educational innovations on today's event and have a meaningful time today. Thank you very much. Bravo. Thank you. So, Mr. Uh, Mrs. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. So, Dr. Farida Nurashara, please uh, jump into your talk. Floor is yours. I'm so sorry for Farida. Okay. Okay, it's so, okay, Hannah. Thank you so much, Dr. Christopher Nubesi, and then thank you also for Mr. Hundu Park uh, from four different Korea who uh, invited me to be one of the keynote speakers here in this very uh, interesting uh, special seminar on STEM. It is an honor for me to be here to share our experiences in conducting teacher professional development programs on STEM education topic in Indonesia. Now, before I start my presentation, let me share my uh, screen first and make sure that the screens can be seen uh, nicely in your screen. Okay, can, can you see the screen? Hello, can you hear my voice? We hear your voice. Uh, we can't see your screen yet. Okay, probably it's still need to um, wait for a little bit. How about now? Um, your okay. camera may be stopped huh? and we can't see your <clears throat> screen. Maybe if you could restart your video, uh, Farida, and try it again. Can you feel? Sorry. Can you start again, Farida? Well, I we already sent Farida. you as a co host. Can you start again? He's not with us any longer. I think she will assess, okay. I think she is out of the meeting right now. So what do you think um, if we cannot uh, handle this problem, if we change uh, the order of the speakers, if uh, Farida uh, cannot uh, return in, in a minute or so, and uh, what about if uh, Dr. Chang Wing Kin? Uh, oh, I, I, I can uh, start any time if uh, Dr. Farada cannot uh, join in the meeting. Yeah. Um, I let this decision to made uh, by uh, Hanna uh, from the organization team, but uh, we can just simply switch uh, order if, uh, if it's a solution. I think she is trying to assess here again. Let's give her give her a few more minutes to try. Um, Christoph, what's going on in uh, your part of the world with Steam lately? Is something new? Did you start a new web uh, group or something? 
Yes, um, actually, many many things are happening uh, right right here right now. So, uh, those who are interested in in mathematics uh, and mathematics popularization, mathematics learning, uh, let me promote you a, a new website. It's called Pop Math. You can uh, try Pop Math. Uh, I can uh, write uh, the uh, web address a bit later uh, to the chat. And this is a global uh, map uh, of um, current uh, math popularization events. And uh, you can register uh, your math popularization event anywhere in the world. And actually, all of us can see what's going on. And this can be an important uh, source uh, for information uh, for uh, math popularization events uh, also in the STEAM around the world. So this is a Very new interesting. thing. Yeah. So, so are these would these be public, publicly accessible yeah. popularization events? Are they held at museums and that sort of thing? Or? Yeah, the main, main criteria that it should be accessible uh, by anyone, and uh, yeah, so preferably not like a closed seminar where uh, only uh, selected few uh, can enter, but. Uh, those kind of events uh, which um, are more uh, addressed uh, to the public and um, so yes uh, and everything uh, can go and it's really exciting to see uh, that how this uh, uh, universe is uploading right at the moment and more and more events appearing right. every day yeah and also there's another community uh, it's called steam learning now steam learning now uh, if you search for that uh, in the facebook uh, for those of you who use facebook there is a wonderful growing community steam learning now i will also put uh, the um, uh, the uh, web address uh, here uh, soon so that's also worth to check out so, but I don't know if uh, uh, Farida managed to, to, show, to, to, to solve this problem. Okay. Hello, can you hear my voice clearly? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, you. I was kicked out from the Zoom. Okay, no problem. Please, can you try to share? Yes, your yes. screen is right now. now. Yes, I uh, think. Okay, to... finally, yeah. thank you. You are here. And in the rain. Yes. The rain just stopped now. Okay. Okay. Please go ahead. Uh, no worries about the loss of time. Uh, maybe the first uh, question session will be a bit shorter, but please go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Christoph. I'm very sorry for this inconvenient situations. And today I would like to share to all of you about the flexibility on STEM towards STEAM's uh, teacher professional development program during the channel during the challenging time. So in this time. Actually, I will not talk much about the theory about uh, STEM and or STEAM education, but more uh, share the best practice of what we, uh, Dr. Christoph Vanivesi mentioned in the introductions that we already conducted uh, some of teacher professional programs, especially on the topic of STEM education. And... Uh, Probably, first of all, before I continue to uh, uh, directly into my presentation, I would like to introduce a little bit about what is CIMEO uh, organizations. Actually, right now, uh, I am is the beauty director of uh, CIMEO uh, Regional Centers for uh, Mathematics, for KITAP in Mathematics. This is under the CIMEO uh, Centers which is an organization of Minister of Education and Culture in Southeast Asian countries. And then um, the, the missions of this uh, organization actually uh, related to promoting regional collaboration on education, science, and culture in Southeast Asian regions. And um, the CIMU Secretariat is located in Bangkok, Thailand. And then... Um, the member of the countries consists of 11 countries. We also have associate member countries from Australia, Canada, Germany, uh, New Zealand, and Spain. And we also have an affiliate members um, that are in the National Council for Open and Distant Education in Norway, University of Tsukuba, Japan, and the British Council. 
also China Education Association for International Exchange in Tiongkok, and also Asia Pacific Center of Education for International Understanding from South Korea. And then, um, Sikkim or Simu Regional Center for Kitab in Mathematics, the stand for Sikkim's, is an institution uh, that um, a center of professional leader in mathematics education for teacher and educational personnel in continuous framework. So we work more on how um, uh, provide the teachers with um, teach many teacher professional development programs. And our mission is to provide education and services in terms of quality mathematics education for teachers and education personnel in senior member countries. And then um, we have uh, many programs, okay, um, the programs of um, Sikkim's consists of, at least here I share to all of you, 10 programs. First, we have a regular courses, second, in country courses, uh, customized courses, online courses, course development workshop, joint research, research and development, seminar and symposium, uh, IT content development, and consultation services. And this is some of the activities that we have. And on training programs, we have the main topic of the trainings. We have the main topic of the training. Um, there are um, eight main topic of the training. First, um, teachers make mathematics teaching aids, and then joyful learning in mathematics education. The truth is differentiated instruction in mathematics education, and then um, the fourth is integrating ICT in mathematics education, the fifth is clinical supervision in mathematics education, and STEM education, of course, become one of the, our main topics. Okay. Um, become one of the main, uh, our main topics for trainings. Why we choose STEM or STEM in the futures as one of our um, teams in our trainings. Okay, I will share to you. Based on the, oops, very sorry. Here, uh, if we see in this map, um, this map I take from the leader words. Okay? As we can see that in the Southeast Asian countries, the background of leader words come from Southeast Asian countries. They have a background in education, special in engineering and architect architectures, and also in education. So most of uh, world leaders come from Southeast Asian countries have these backgrounds. So I think it is quite, uh, really relevant if we want to promote STEM to um, so that we can have more engineers and also um, more professionals from education who potentially become the world leaders. And then based on the study that I did, the survey, uh, this is in 2020, yeah, 2020. Uh, the characteristic of the participants in this survey, okay, we can see that 46.2% um, of the participants, they teach uh, uh, 5 until 10 years. They, they have been teaching mathematics for 5 until 10 years. And then only, um, yeah, less than, I think, 10% the one who already more than 15 years. So uh, we can see the characteristic of the participants. Yeah, mostly they uh, belong five under 15 years, a teaching period. Okay. And then the result uh, I got is that more than seven the um, they haven't heard about STEM education or they already heard, but they do not have any idea about what STEM uh, is and how we STEM in uh, our classroom, especially in mathematics classrooms. The total of participants, 162 primary and secondary mathematics teachers. This situation, of course, 
um, uh, it become the uh, reasons how we have to promote uh, STEM education, especially in Indonesia and Southeast Asian countries. And then Sikkim have the program on STEM education. There are we have uh, three types. First, we have a regular courses. Second one, we have in country course, and uh, the third is STEM camp. This uh, three programs, this is a, a, co a course, yeah, this is a training, this is type of a training programs. And then uh, the, the two types of training programs is different in terms of the time of the participants and also how we conducted uh, the training. For the regular courses, the target participants are mathematics teachers in primary and secondary in Southeast Asian countries. And we use international standard design so that we use English as uh, the language. No, no. Hello. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know why the screen just um, moved by themselves. I can, and then um, the second one in country course, the target participant is a local teachers from Indonesia, okay, from Indonesian schools, and we just using the national standard designs, and then the STEM cam, uh, the, the STEM cam, um, it because of the pandemic situation, it's supposed to be for the local teacher also. But because of the pandemic situation, we move closer. It's around our um, around our uh, office. I mean, around Jogjakarta and Nerbi areas only. Local and less formal standard designs, and this is um, the what the pictures of uh, three types of the programs you can see. We can see Dr. Christoph Venvesi, uh, the one who already involved in our STEM camp program. Uh, on October 2020. Okay, and then we also have another programs in community involvement. This we call this one the STEM village. Okay, this have, uh, or in Indonesia we call it a Kampung STEM, Joho. The aim of the STEM village is we, we provide uh, the community in that village an applicable knowledge that integrate, integrated STEM in everyday left um, to the people of the Kampung Joho or the village Joho. Mm -hmm. And the activities involve for children, adults, and also for ladies. Okay, for children, we make a simple stand-based game creation. And then for the adults, we introduce how uh, the product creation with a cell value using the STEM approach. Um, and then for the ladies, we introduce the locally based product and then creation using a STEM approach, just like an eco print for the batik and ciboli. Uh, this is the examples of uh, the activities we conducted on STEM village Joho. Unfortunately, because of the pandemic situations, uh, this uh, activity we postponed because uh, there are many restrictions for this one and we could not afford and then we couldn't manage because uh, it's much more difficult to manage the community or the people in the village rather than uh, to manage teachers. Okay? Uh, that is the reasons, okay? the reason why we postponed uh, this uh, program during pandemic situations. Then when the pandemic COVID-19 came, um, basically, I want to explain to all of you that all the three courses that we design is um, not for an online or blended uh, type of courses, but all the three types we design uh, as a face-to-face -face teacher professional uh, development um, program. Then when the pandemic uh, COVID-19 came, hit us together. We have to switch. We have to think fastly and then, but also in a flexible way, those activities into fully online and then blended form and then offline. How we make adjustment in the offline, in the online and blended, it is very, very challenging time for us. But, um, thanks, Gary, already, um, 
face this one. I will start from infantry course first. Why? Because the infantry course uh, training uh, uh, teacher professional development programs has much more variety in in the program. Not only online, but also conducted in offline, and also um, it's in false teachers, not only uh, in one group, but many. In country courses that we conducted, usually in face-to-face, -face, it needs a week alone. The participant have to finish 42 hours training sessions um, uh, in every session, should be 45 minutes. And the targets of this um, program is uh, our primary and secondary teachers. Usually we collaborated with um, local districts, education um, institutions in uh, some district in Indonesia. But uh, last year, we also uh, collaborate with the Association of Indonesian Teachers who teach in Indonesian school around the world. So we conducted this type of infantry course on STEM but online. How we choose whether this is online, offline, or blended? First, we uh, select the type of the area where we have to conduct the IC and also the capacity of a local committee, the capacity of the local committee. For example, if the local committee, they can provide the places and then all the accommodation for the teachers and then we, uh, they can also implement the protocol COVID-19 as uh, strictly, then we can conduct this infantry course in a face-to-face -face, uh, setting. Uh, what uh, types of COVID-19 protocol? For example, like this one, before we con uh, before we enter the um, classroom and then the, the program, all the teachers should be um, tested by uh, PCR and or by the rapid test here in Indonesia to make sure that they are free from the COVID-19. Okay, and then they have to wearing masks and then you get a set uh, setting the classroom, the classroom so that there uh, we we need uh, you know distance between one uh, participants and other participants and also the circulation of the air in the classroom we conducted in offline form. But then because uh, some of the uh, local committee, committee cannot be afford this accommodation, then we conducted in online platforms. And um, here is the uh, syllabus of the in-country course. The differences between in-country course and regular course is uh, located at the implementation of the STEM design. If we can see here from the syllabus, in infantry courses, the participant do not have obligation to uh, the implementation of the STEM design, STEM project that they created during the training. But later on, in um, regular courses, in regular <laughs> Very oh, sorry. But later on in regular courses, they have to um, implement the STEM project into the um, real teaching set the differences. Okay. This is some of the examples that we conducted uh, in country courses in uh, one of the districts. They then make a mess, um, uh, focus of mess, and then also at the airplane. They Okay, outdoor activity. And then here, the syllabus of the regular courses. The syllabus of the regular courses. Okay. The syllabus of the regular courses, um, almost the same, okay, with the infantry courses, but the difference is located here, as we can see. Um, they have, uh, we have a peer teaching spare, uh, sessions, real teachings, reflection, and writing the report. So, uh, regular courses, uh, need to finish 100 training sessions here. And then, 
all the regular courses we conducted in online mode all the regular courses now uh, we do not have uh, regular courses in a face-to-face um, uh, setting and then i will share to you how we conducted um, the regular courses on stem education okay hello hannah i'm sorry i couldn't move my screen here probably you already um take the control for the uh slides okay could you move fine. forward could you move forward sorry uh could could you move to the next slides because i couldn't control this from here uh sorry but i cannot control your your slide but here i also can confirm my slide from my screen um okay Ah, can you solve this? <laughs> Did you try to click uh, on your screen? Okay, yeah, yeah, I already clicked several okay. times, and but it seems. Uh, if you start a new screen sharing, so you stop screen sharing and. Okay, stop sharing, and then I try to share screen. screen again. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, yeah, I I will share to all of you how our one participants from Myanmar, Miss Sumiat, she implemented the STEM project in online platform. This is very interesting because I read from uh, many questions in the list that uh, Hannah gave to me about how we implement the STEM project during pandemic situations. But then finally. Uh, we have one example here when Ms. Sumiat implement her design about a hoop glider teaching uh, STEM project it's located in Indonesia. Okay, here the students uh, were from Pertiwi School located in Jakarta, and Ms. Sumiat uh, from Myanmar, the one who uh, who would be the teachers of uh, of the students uh, she explained um, how uh, students need to do a stem project uh, the steps and i hope it can inspire uh, teachers here in conducting stem projects uh, in online platforms okay i will try to uh, um, play the video if you couldn't hear the voice please let me know then probably um, we will do uh, we will try to play the video from the Hannah screens. We have no sound. Okay, no sounds. So how about Hannah? Are you ready to play the video? I will stop my screen. What you can do if you go to screen sharing, Farida, and you share computer sound. Okay, I will if try. If you don't put the bottom line in your screen sharing. Yes, yeah, so you can share it again with the sound. Okay, I will try. Be sure to choose the advanced settings and make sure you're sharing computer audio. Okay, we'll try audio setting. I will try this computer's audio. It is probably not in the settings, uh, but uh, in the share screen options. And the share screen options? Yes, when you share, share screen, screen options, yes. Uh, it's on the bottom line. Bottom, you will uh, see. You, you, you can just uh, stop sharing first, and then okay. you share again, and at the bottom, you can find a check box with uh, share computer sound. Okay, or I will have computers.
from yourselves. Okay, can you hear the voice? Fortunately not. No. We still have no sound. Yeah. Okay, so I will try to... All right, let me do this one. Are you with us, Farida? Yes, yes, I still okay. with you. I will because try to share you seeing this one. I hope it. Okay. How about now? Uh, we have seen something for a moment. Uh, maybe I, I can try to uh, help you to play that one. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Amazing. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, mingle our machine. Uh, this is like a, a good uh, morning, mingle our machine. Good morning. Do you think is it also an airplane? No. 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 no, I don't know what is that. <laughs> okay, let's say you are part of the team engineer. You are the great, great, great engineer that is up yeah. by the company to build a hoop glider to connect it among the cities. Uh, your job is to design and build Bye, hoop glider. That can transport people to go a long trip. Now you are an engineer. Okay. Okay. Okay, and then. Uh, How do you make it? Uh, yes. Write your brainstorming ideas on your Maybe book I can or paper. Write the what glue too. Oh uh, yes, you have to make a glue a hoop glider and. You have to make a successful solution. Use this is the criteria for you. Your hoop glider must fly, uh, must hold a minimum of 1.5 meter or 12 feet. Uh. Okay. And your hoop glider can fly about two seconds. Mm -hmm. It's minimum. Yeah. So, Wait, I'm so Do you get it? How long the strong is will be? Okay, and it's uh, it's depend on you. It's okay. depend on you. You can use your own design and you can create your own hook glider. So uh, okay. you can discuss with your group member. Okay. Please uh, please take a note. You have to test three times. Yeah. With your group member. Yeah. And record what happens. And record what happens in the following table. My three hoop glider yes. fly about three meters and three seconds. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
great. You did it. You and did my great two job. guys. Mm -hmm. And my two fighter by about two meters and two seconds. Oh, great. It's great. So, it's, uh, you did a great job. Thank you. <laughs> yes, yes. You can speak. Okay. From my experiment, um, yes. I, I made three glider yes the first one was this one this was the short hoop glider and this yes. one basically fly for two seconds okay. and the, the and this link was 30 centimeter yes great and this one this i made this at last this was the yes, shortest yes. but the loop was the biggest yeah and this one was 10 centimeter long it flies a little bit like it flies one cent one meters from yes. here to there okay great and the last one was the, the longest, and it has three hoops. Yes, three hoops. And so I tested. This was the farthest of them all. This flies about like three meters from here to there. Yes. And this thing was 23, and it lasts for like four from three to four seconds oh great you found you found it a uh, great hoop glider and thank you welcome you are great job okay. all of you did a great job and okay. you text the hoop, hoop glider good, good. i text my hoop glider oh. so uh yes, yes. Yes, if you change the distance between hope, do you think it will go further? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Ooh. If you change the measurement of hoop, uh, what will happen? Uh, you change the hoop, right? The bigger one and the small one you change. Uh, if you change the measurement of hoop, what will happen? I think it will fly. Oh, yes. Like a little bit further and a little bit up, I think. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, you I see, so. you see in the presentation, uh, 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 some of uh, your friends have three hoop gliders. Stand up. I have so, do glider. more hoops help the glider to fly better? Hmm. I think because this one, when I tried in the first one, it's it spin when it flies. Yes. And this one was the farther, so I think it makes it better to fly. Yes. Great. Great. Thank you. I hand it over to you. Okay, Perfect. thank you so much. That's perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, now um, let's come to my slides. Okay, that's uh, the, ex uh, the examples that how we conducted uh, the real teachings, uh, the real teachings during our regular courses. Um, and actually, not only this uh, one video, but I share the video the one to use in English so that uh, you all the participants here can understand very well. We also have many other uh, good examples from our uh, regular course using uh, STEM projects. Okay, um, here we got questions, uh, Darling. I'm sorry because we haven't uh, posted the video into our YouTube channels. Uh, because it related to the permission from the parents, the schools, and so on. So we still wait. If we already uh, got uh, the grant, they granted the permissions, then probably we will share into our YouTube channel. 
let's we move to the STEM camp. Um, this program uh, encompass a week long workshop. This is an offline mode, so we do not conduct it in online mode. But um, not purely offline because we also invited Dr. Krista Benavesi as one of our uh, facilitator in this uh, our STEM camp. And the difference between the STEM camp as in uh, in country course is that uh, in the STEM camp, uh, less formal, we we did uh, we conducted the uh, the training in the less formal um, programs, and then the targets also, as I said, that the knowledge of Jakarta, and because in the STEM camp we were focused on the collaborative STEM activities, so. Uh, we need to um, uh, take the participants into one place so they can uh, work on the collaboration. And this program is fully funded by Sikkim, so it's uh, free for the participants. They just stay in one place together. Everything we already prepares. And there's also a selection by the Sikkims. Otherwise, in uh, in country courses, we do not conduct the selections, but usually the selections did by the local committee, not by the sittings. That's the difference. And this is one of the uh, most favorite pictures from the STEM camp, last STEM camp, when Dr. Crystal uh, lead all the participants in a hotel, in the hotel, to build a geodesic dome. And the video, and I uh, put some of the video on my uh, introductions uh, when I share. And then this is another example when all the participants um, did STEM projects on the uh, topic of water tower, and then they testing their uh, designs in near to the um, um, swimming pool. Now, the flexibility in shifting yeah, from the offline into the online setting. As I mentioned before, that some of our in-country courses we conducted on online mode. Here, I pick some examples on the topic of um, STEM project with the topic of water towers. Hello, could, can you hear my voice clearly? Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, because I hear some noise here. I'm I'm afraid that you cannot hear me. Okay. And uh, you have about yes. uh, seven minutes to go if it's fine. Okay, seven minutes. Okay, okay. okay. Thank you. This is some the Okay, thank you. Uh, these are uh, the examples of how we conducted a uh, STEM project uh, teacher professional development program using an online mode. The participant have to post the design using learning application uh, .com .org that I uh, created. And then after they uh, build the design, they implement the design, and then they have to test the design, then they post how they uh, how they test the design, whether it works or not. Okay. This is the example, and then they posting not only the pictures but but also some videos. Here the videos, but I could uh, I will not uh, play the videos. It's only when they uh, show how they already uh, implemented the project, and then they test whether the uh, water tower can uh, support the water. Okay, in at the bottom. Now the stem into steam. How? Uh, the research, uh, because this is a case study in my own uh, STEM projects. Okay, the water tower pro, uh, STEM project actually um, uh, asking the participant to create a design of water tower uh, in accordance to the issue of water con conservations, uh, especially in Indonesia. Actually, this is design uh, using a use straw, not the new one. But then, in online platform, it is impossible for all the participants to uh, seek the use uh, straw. So, like it or not, they buy the new one. Actually, the idea, we will use the use straw from the school canteen to build some projects um, in STEM. But then, because of the pandemic and an online platform, it cannot be done. Okay. 
But then I found from the data that I have, there are three um, interesting problems to be uh, discussed and to be studied further. First, the concept of altitudes. About 60% of the elementary teachers and then 10% of the secondary teachers cannot determine where uh, the altitude of the uh, um, water tower, okay, correctly, yeah. And then they also have a um, problem with visualizing the abstract idea into drawing and into, sen and into sentence. And the last one, the executing the design, as we can see from the example right here. On the left hand is the design, and the, or on the right hand, hand is um, the implementations. Okay, it is almost uh, similar, but uh, the details of the um, water tower is not um, uh, is not put on the drawings, and then it is also quite good. See, the designs on the left is like this, and then when the implementation, they get the water tower like this one. Okay, we move forward. This one, how could that the design is quite so different with the, uh, the real uh, product that they uh, got, okay? This is very interesting finding in my opinion, okay? And then you can laugh. So the design is like this and then the implementation is like this. Okay, from the left to the right, okay? So based on this data, Okay, I found that there is a problem related to the visualization, representation, and also the abstraction of the participant, especially here uh, uh, on the water tower stem projects. Most of the participants lack of the detail when they uh, ex express um, their image uh, idea, the abstract idea into the drawing for the design. Here, I put two pictures. On my left uh, screen, there is a dragon. This dragon, of course, from the imagination, then um, they put into the drawings, but it's quite details like this one. You can see the foot of the dragons and then so on, the, and the fires. And uh, on my right hand, it related to how we make drawing the real objects. Usually, the real object come from the two-dimensional object into two dimensional object. But here in this case, I show you draw um, me from, uh, as one of his project also. In this case, I think um, we can the drawing here as an art a component to the project of, uh, to the STEM project with the topic of water tower. By adding the arts into the STEM project of water tower could probably help the participant in terms of making visualizations, representation and abstraction. So they can um, drawing and then when implemented the design into the real objects, uh, they can make prediction how many straw they will use and then uh, the dimension of the water tower itself. And I think it is very, very important and it become a um, new opportunity to be uh, studied in a future uh, uh. research. And then um, the conclusion is that with the flexibility in the design, I think uh, teacher professional We're development program Mistake can be carried out during the pandemic COVID 19. So, the main point is how creative and how flexible us to uh, redesign again all the, all the teacher professional development programs. So, I think that's enough for me. I hope that can inspire all the participants here, uh, lecturers, and also researchers on STEM education. Thank you very much. Now the time I give back to you, Christoph or Hanna. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Farida. Um, could I just ask one, one quick question? If there were people in your, um, in your vicinity who were interested in, in becoming engaged and involved with your, with your project, 
Could they contact you at the uh, email address that you've provided, or are there other websites that they could um, use to connect with you? Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Brownell. Actually, uh, you can contact me through my email address. I will give the email address uh, into the chat box, okay? Thank you. That would be that would be wonderful. Uh, would you be able to stick around for some uh, a little joint question and answer time at the end of uh, Dr. Kim's uh, time? I'd like to move to to give him the time now. Is that all right? Yes. Yes, it is okay. I think. Okay. Uh, uh, coming coming to us from uh, Hong Kong, uh, Dr. Kim, would you? Um, take over or uh, Christoph, do you have uh, a few things that you need to say? Uh, no, I, I think uh, it's, uh, if, it, if we go forward and uh, the next speaker, uh, speakers who've been already introduced are uh, Dr. Chang Bin Kin and uh, his daughter, uh, Ms. Chang Claire Tsayan, and um, their talk is uh, called Enriching Student-Centered STEAM Learning Experience with Body Frame. So uh, we will see a lot of interesting uh, examples, I'm sure. And many people here are already using 4D Frame and who are not yet using 4D Frame, I'm sure that they will use 4D Frame after they see what can be done with 4D Frame. So the floor is yours and uh, Chris uh, will also uh, be uh, our uh, host that we will keep in time and uh, he will conduct uh, the uh, final joint uh, question and answer session where questions to Marida and also uh, to Cheng and uh, Claire uh, and uh, Kin uh, can be uh, discussed and posted. So please post your questions in the chat already from now. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, uh, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Chen Winkin from Hong Kong. Um, I am a freelance uh, educator. I work in uh, work at different university in Hong Kong. Um, let me introduce myself. I'm a curriculum development development officer in the University of Hong Kong, and also I'm uh, teaching in the uni uh, Chinese University of Hong Kong and the Hong Kong Baptist University as a lecturer. I mainly teach uh, some P-surface and in-surface teachers, uh, those uh, math teachers. And here you can see my uh, book uh, in Cantonese. It is uh, um, about having fun with dice, learning uh, mathematics with, uh, uh, with fun for primary school kids. Um, and I'm happy to share a different idea with you uh, if you are interested. And I'm also a researcher. I'm uh, interested in uh, any idea in uh, researching on mathematic education, STEAM or STEM, uh, 40 frame student center learning. Now, um, here are some thing, uh, some material uh, that I ha uh, that we ha we have. Uh, what can we do with this uh, material? How can we make use of these uh, to help uh, small kids in learning uh, mathematics? Um, I choose um, something uh, about the number sense for very small uh, kids, uh, like three to uh, five or six or seven years old uh, kids. And we can make something like that. You can see I use a 40 frame. I use the wheel uh, of the 40 frame. I use some beads. Uh, those are the beads that Claire um, used when she was very, very small. She used them uh, in making some bracelet, but uh, she um, did not use those beads now. So I uh, take those be uh, beads uh, to make something like that. And uh, you can see I use soft clay to make something like that. And you can see some dice here. And um, today, I'd like to share with you some idea about the rack and rack and the 10 frame. Um, it helps small kids in building up number sense. Um, so it's something like um, counting, addition, subtraction, and some place value concept. But I think uh, in a short period of time, I don't, uh, I am not uh, able to uh, speak all 
um, about these concepts. So uh, let me share with you some uh, basic um, mathematic development of small kids. Um, at a very young age, um, small kids, uh, they can do addition and subtraction without uh, formal schooling. Um, the success depends on whether the problem contains more number, uh, whether the context is meaningful, and whether manipulatives are available. Um, so uh, sometimes if we want to help small kids in develop number sense, we have to give the kids something to play with. Um, that's uh, those manipulatives. And I think 40 frame is a very, very good tool uh, in giving the um, chance for small kids to uh, play with. And also uh, the preschooler performance improve uh, when nonverbal responses are permitted. Uh, sometimes uh, teachers always ask students to write something down, write the number sentence. But uh, if we just ask the student uh, to work on something, show me something, uh, what is it about that? Uh, then I think they can move some bees, they can show you something. Uh, it sh shows their um, uh, concept. And... Um, and here, uh, I would like to uh, explain to you uh, small, uh, small kids, they view numbers as non-structure. So what does it mean by non-structure? So let's take 35 as an example. And they know that um, 35, this number, it has 10 digit and unit digit. Uh, but they consider this number as a whole numeral. Uh, it is a certain number. Uh, they, um, we can see, we can see that uh, this 35, we can break them into two parts. We can break them into three tens and five ones. But uh, small kids, they just consider it as a number. So uh, they just count it as a number, as a group of uh, items. Um, but they, uh, they cannot consider that as decimally structured. And um, we have uh, another example. Some small kids, they write 35 as 305. They write uh, 753 as three, uh, 70053. Because uh, they do not integrate both paths, they just uh, tend to write the number verbally. So 700, 700, it is 700. Um, so uh, they they know how to handle two digit number, but uh, once it comes to three digit number, they sometimes they write it in this form seven zero zero uh, five three, and here hundreds as a bundle unit, and they are not yet uh, integrated into a place value of two digit or three digit numbers. And here is another uh, very good uh, table that um, shows how. Uh, children, they do uh, addition and subtraction. Uh, I would like you to just spend about like uh, 10 to 20 seconds, uh, see what this is about. Okay, um, in our schooling, uh, very often teacher tends to teach to uh, children um, the, um, sorry, um, the digit based algorithm um, in column form, but um, wait for a moment. Um, let me stop sharing. I did again. I uh, clicked the warm button. Okay. Um, some kids, uh, they tend to use, uh, use digit-based, uh, a teacher use uh, digit-based uh, algorithm, uh, teach kids um, on doing the vertical form, addition or subtraction. But actually, uh, the student, they can uh, do the number-based strategies uh, if they have something to uh, play with. Uh, they have some manipulatives. Um, they can uh, do some addition, like here, um, if we would like to add 38, 
46 to uh, 38, uh, they can uh, do decomposition, they can do it sequentially. Like, uh, what does it mean by sequen sequentially? Uh, 38, they can use the finger or use some manipulative. They can count it by 10. So they have uh, 48, 58, 68, and then 78. They count four tenths and they get 78. And then they add up six, they do counting. Um, so they can work on it sequentially. But uh, in our schooling, particularly in Hong Kong, uh, when children, uh, they are in uh, primary uh, two, when they start learning addition, uh, teachers normally just uh, focus on the digit-based addition in column form. And the student needs to experience in uh, um, playing with numbers sequentially, uh, doing decomposition and doing varying or column-based strategies. Um, so here, I'd like to share with you how we can uh, play with the, um, this idea with 10 frame. And this one is um, developed by Research Hub and the Walls. Uh, is something like that uh, with a lot of different uh, time frame cards uh, showing seven. And here uh, it is um, the 10, here it is the uh, 10 frame made by 40 frame material. And you can see here, it, uh, uh, it is a QR code so then, uh, showing you how we can make a 10 frame. Okay, another example here, I make a 10 frame and I uh, use an A4 size paper, drawing some one inch boxes, uh, and we can have 10 frame in this form. Okay, and then another one, uh, I make it, uh, make the 10 frame in a rack. Okay, um, so um, 10 frame, uh, it helps students uh, to anchor number uh, to 5 and 10. Say, for example, 8. Uh, students can consider it as three, uh, uh, 5 and 3 more. So uh, they can see a 5 and then uh, 3 beats at the bottom. Or they can see uh, uh, it is 2 away from 10. So uh, they have that this number 8. Uh, it, help children to anchor their number eight into five and ten. Um, so it's moving the transition for students uh, from doing counting to addition and uh, consider number as a structure number. And it helps students to subsidize uh, a small number. Another one I would like to share with you is this uh, rack and rack. Uh, and I think uh, it is developed in the whole and all Dutch uh, researcher, a Asian Travers. And I think uh, it can, uh, I, I think it pronounced as rake and rack, right? Uh, actually, I don't really um, sure about uh, the pronunciation. Um, it helps children in uh, building up number sense. Actually, it is called counting rack. Uh, rack. And how to make a rack and rack? And you here we I have the QR code. Uh, later on, I can share with you. And if you like to make it with forty frame and some bees, then you can uh, you can tr uh, try to follow it. In this one, it shows how we can play with the uh, rack and rack. And then uh, if you don't have the 40 frame, you don't have the bees, uh, you can try some virtual tools. And here are some good virtual tools uh, that you can find um, in the, uh, on the internet. But I strongly suggest that uh, if the children are given the physical tool to explore, it, um, it would be much, much better. Okay, now uh, let me um, show some demonstration to you uh, about how we can play with this 10 frame and how we can uh, play with the rack and rack. Let me stop sharing here. I use another gadget uh, to share with you. Okay, I think uh, you can see uh, you can see the ten frame, right? So, um, what if the keys are um, small? We can just simply throw a dice. One, and the kids show one here. And uh, if 
we can show another die six. Can you add six to it? And the student uh, and the small kid need to count six. So the kids need to count six and then place it on the 10 frame. Okay, so they get a number and you can ask the kids what it represents. It is seven. And um, when kids have in, uh, ample time to play with, uh, they, they may anchor the number seven as five and two. And you can ask the kids uh, how many more views should you add on it to make 10? So it helps them to make 10. They need three more. So seven and three, it makes 10. Um, I think uh, it is really important uh, that uh, uh, if we help kids um, to make 10, it helps them to develop um, a, a subsetizing skill uh, in doing addition. And we can use another one, this one. Um, so, um, row number five. And the kids, they can move this bit and they can show five. And we can also set some other uh, mission cards. Um, when the kids, they draw some um, mission cards, say, uh, can you show me an eight? And some students, they may use five and three. Okay. So it is, um, sorry, let me, yeah. Um, five and three, they can get eight. And they may do it two, four, six, and eight. And I think uh, it helps kids uh, to uh, play with it. Now, uh, let's move on to the rack and rack. And this one is the rack and rack. Okay, so let me move away this one. And um, so now let's take another dice. It is a 20-sided uh, dice. And I throw the number 13. It shows 13, but uh, the direction of the camera does not show it quite well. So it is 13. And we ask the keys to show us 13. And I think they can easily move 10 and then one, two, three. So it is uh, 13. And uh, we can also use this one and we can add another row of uh, um, beads. And each row of beads uh, can represent unit digit, 10 digit, and 100 digit. And we can add keys to do uh, addition of two digit number. And they um, do not need to use the column form. And they play with this one. Uh, they will start um, having some place value concept. And uh, they, uh, they can use the decomposition method. Uh, they can use the sequential method uh, in doing addition or subtraction. So I think it is really good uh, way to help students. Uh, they have some to play with it. They work on it, and they build up the uh, they build up the math concept. Okay, and let me come back to this one. So I have a and using 40 frame. And I think uh, 40 frame, it is excellent too, because uh, as you can see, I can just um, add another row of bees and uh, I have another row and I can easily make another one. Okay. And uh, we can make it more fun with dice because uh, when children play with the dice, uh, it is more entertaining because uh, they don't know what number is shown next. And also, uh, some student may have a sense of ownership because that number, I throw it out. Uh, I, I, this number is the number that I, uh, I made. Okay, so um, I think uh, the kids are really enjoying playing this kind of game. And uh, we can also um, make it as a project learning. So uh, for larger kids like uh, grade three, grade four uh, children, uh, we can uh, give them a project task, uh, ask them to do something, make an abacus uh, based on the rack and rack. Uh, they build on something, they do research, um, 
And I think uh, if teachers allow students to do so, uh, they can use the abacus that they make or the rack and rack that may, they make in the assessment, in the test, in the exam. Um, and I think this one would be the own production of a calculator, the calculator, okay. Um, and we can have uh, some other research. Um, teacher may allow a uh, student to use the rack and rack in the assessment, or um, um, teacher may allow kids, um, grade three, grade four student to make their own abacus and see if there is any improvement in the children's performance. And um, in making the bees, um, I have some other uh, suggestions, see if it work, uh, I don't know. Uh, we can use uh, 40 frame views, um, uh, the black one, uh, and if we use different color, I think uh, it has a better visual image for the student. And um, I use soft clay to mix uh, another rack um, of rack and rack. And I think uh, the small kids, they can make one on their own. It can be an art lesson. They can use soft case to make some beads like that. And for um, larger children, uh, um, older children, I mean, um, they can um, use 3D printing uh, to print the beads. And also, uh, we may try to see if uh, we can use recycled plastic, uh, put it in metal mode, in donut shape, see if they can make some uh, plastic recycled bees that can help um, the smaller children in their own school. And now, let me... Um, um, I, I, I think uh, it's time for Claire to show her uh, working and uh, I, uh, she has some creation using 4D frame. Um, Claire, your, um, over to you. Um, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen first. I think you can see my screen now. Yes, we can. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. I am Claire Chang from Hong Kong St. Mark School. So I'm really happy to have this chance to participate in this STEM seminar. And anyways, I learned a lot. Um, without further delay, I would first like to introduce the flow of my presentation. So I'm going to share my learning progress using 40 frame from grade four to grade seven. So for grade four, I made a robotic arm. And for grades five and six, I made two cars with Microbit and a Juno. And for grade seven, I made a theme park collection. And um, lastly, I'm going to do a live demonstration on each of these products. So first, let's start with my grade four creation the robotic arm. So as you can see on the left, these are some features of my um, robotic arm. <coughs> Here are some uh, removable joints and this is a hexagonal structure. And there are arms and fingers connected to my arm. And lastly, there's a pushing stick. So, but what I want, uh, want to focus on is not the features of my robotic arm, but the process I, um, I, I, of how I need it. So this was the original version of the um, of my robotic arm, and I was just following it on a prototype on a book um, of some instructions. And then I tried to um, give it some amendments, and then I thought it would be better if I make it with a uh, better structure. And now I use the hexagonal structure. So as for grade five, I made this um, micro bit car. And also, here are some uh, here are some features. So, I use this micro bit and the Kitronic motor driver, and there are two pairs of wheels. And the structure is a rectangular prism structure with a forty board, which made it very tight. And um, uh, the thing I really like of my uh, car is that these two wheels are easily changeable because um, they, they uh, it's. You just need to reassemble and you can change it any time. And it is very flexible and it can cope with different environments. So, um, 
maybe, for example, when I am walking on a road with many rocks, perhaps I'm going to use this um, small wheels because um, they're they're smaller and um, they have higher density and the rocks may not be that easy to trip. But for um, some slippery road, maybe I'm going to use some bigger wheels so it will be easier to control and um, walk more smoothly. So um, this is basically the same structure as the previous car, but um, this is my grade six creation. Uh, I changed the uh, changed the driver to the Juno, and um, here these are also some um, features of my car. And this is I used the um, 9V Duracell. Okay, this is not direct advertising. Um, and here I use the uh, 40 frame mechatronics Juno board. Um, and there are four DC motors, unlike the previous car. Um, it is more strong and it would be walking faster. And um, lastly, this is a uh, bigger size wheel. Um, let me go back, sorry. Oops. <coughs> here. Um, and also, it, this Archimedia solid is used as a container because I made this car for a competition. Uh, so, um, so uh, this uh, this uh, can carry some small objects from one place to another. So let's move on. Um, after this process of these two years, um, grade, my grade five and grade six uh, experience, I learned many things such as using the uh, um, different solids as um, Dr. Christoph has mentioned earlier that in uh, Dr. Chang's presentation, uh, maybe we can make some giant dice with these solids. So these are some platonic solids made with 40 frame. I remember that that is called the tetrahedron and then the cube and then the uh, octahedron and the icosahedron and the dodecahedron. And also I made this tower with some um, triangles and different si uh, different lengths of tube. This is the 6cm, this is the 5cm, and this is the 4cm, and then 2.5, and then two, and go straight into the, uh, to the top of the tower. And this is a very tight structure. Um, so another thing I learned was that um, Building 4D frame has a very important key, which is flexibility. Because in my two cars, I uh, I made the Archimedia solid that can be easily assembled to the car. And also I can change the wheels anytime. And I think it's very important in order to cope with different, um, you know, sort of environment or anything. And um, this is also my uh, learning progress of programming that I would like to share with you. So um, this is the project that I made with the microbit made code editor. And then I tried different functions like using the radio signal. And as for grade six, I uh, used this Juno Uno, which is not that board I uh, mentioned earlier, but actually another board, but I'm not going too deep into it and also the Adreno board from the 40 frame mechatronic kits. And I control it using the Redibuild smartphone app. So lastly, I'd like to share with you my grade seven creation, which is this year's creation, uh, the theme park collection. I've got only two, but don't mind because I don't really have so much time. So it has two structures, in, including the upper hexagonal structure and the base. So there are colorful seats here that I really like because it was a rainbow actually, as you can see that it's yellow and red and purple and then a blue and then uh, green. And um, I really like it. And lastly, here is a DC motor uh, that I used to swing. And then um, I would also like to introduce that uh, at first, at first, I just followed a prototype um, of making this Ferris wheel in a book also, um, following the instructions. And after that, I came up with an, an idea to create this thrill ride myself that uh, it rotates. So, yeah. And um, as you can see here, this is part one and this is part two. This is the gyro swing that I also made. So here is a servo motor 
and then this is a DC motor for rotating, and then this is a trapezium prism structure also here, and then the colorful hexagonal swing um, here. So this idea was actually from um, my Sweden friends after a competition, and they are here today as uh, supporters as well. And um, uh, this idea of making a gyro swing with wordy frame was actually from them, and I uh, and I collaborated with them for a few months, and I hope we can have more interaction soon. Um, so, as I mentioned at first, um, after my presentation of uh, all these, I'm going to share my uh, my learning progress uh, with, so, I mean, I mean uh, the demonstration of, the live demonstration of my products. So now I'm going to turn off the camera here and then I'm going to move straight to my phone. And now I'm going to share my stuff. Just wait a sec. These technical problems are driving me crazy. So I'm going to share my screen. Okay. So I think you can see my screen now, right? Um, yes, I think you can see it. Yeah. Now I'm going to Just move to my camera. Oh, thank you. Thank you for responding. Um, yes. So first I'd like to show you my robotic arm. I think that only um, talking is very boring. So now I'd like to show you how it works. So when I push this stick, it's going to uh, expand and come back and expand and come back. So next for, for the uh, micro bit car over here, I actually didn't mention before that I actually used a uh, um, control using another micro bit with um, using the uh, radio signal function. So here is the micro bit you can see. And when I turn on the power here, when the two micro bits has a light over here, as you can see now this light and this one, it means they're connected. So now let's get moving. When I tilt forward, it's going to go forward, backward, it goes backward, left and right. Oops, wait. Let me come back first. So we're going to write and then not very steady, it's connection. So it's basically work like this. And I think we shall move on to the uh, Juno car very soon. Just have one last look at this. Okay. Give me one sec to turn it off also. And now I'm going to take my Juno car here. So this time I have to use this smartphone app. Open it up here. And I press control one and I have to connect the cell. Oh. I made this place especially for the cell to put in. And now we can connect the Bluetooth. And when I press this, um, it's connected, hopefully. Okay, so here I can adjust the speed by this down and up button. And now let's go to speed it down a little bit, or it's going too fast and it's out of control. So like this, forward, backward, right and left and let's go back to forward and backward Oops. 
showing a trick. <laughs> so as you can see, the car of uh, the structure of the car and um, these two cars basically have the same structure. It was just the driver that was different. So I hope you like it. Well, and lastly, which is also my favorite part, I'm going to show you my thrill ride. Also, just some connection here. Give me a sec. Okay. And I'm going to disconnect the um, Juno board of the uh, car. And now I'm going to connect it with this micro bit. Also, the cell. Okay, here. E1 controller, and then I connect the Bluetooth here. And for this time, I'm going to also use this and turn down the spit a little bit. And it's going a little bit crazy, actually, to be honest. Look, I can't imagine that any ride in a theme park is going to be like this, but well, this is funny. But there's one part that I really like, apart from the colorful seats, that if you look carefully, he is a passenger in this yellow seat. Let me take it out to let you see closer. Here is a little guy over here, which I made it very carefully. And let's watch the demonstration a little bit more. Maybe just spit down a little bit. So, lastly, the gyro swing. Um, Claire, Claire, um, yes? the phone is off, I think. Uh, you have to connect it again. Oh, thank you for telling me. How about now? No. Still okay. waiting, I think. Maybe I'll try to share again. We have to reshare. Oh, I see. How about now? There yeah. you go. Thank you. So the gyro swing. Hope you can see it now. This time we've got two connection wires because um, one is for the servo motor and the other is for the motor, DC motor. And here. This time I think we're gonna use another controller with a servo motor control. Perhaps this one, like this, as you can see, this swing is swinging now and the servo motor is going to turn like this. Oops. Turn this off. And now I think I'm going to disconnect these two and let's get back to the deep breathing of my PowerPoint. Okay. I'll stop sharing right now. It's normal if you can't see anything. Okay. So, yes. Now I'm going to move back to my computer and I'm going to share my um, PowerPoint once again. I hope you can see me and my PowerPoint now. So here, can you see it? Yes, we can. Thank you. So um, lastly, the last two slides. So as I shown right there, um, um, those are some of my most remarkable creations, but actually I created other things like um, this grade five creation, if you've watched my promotion video, I've actually showed this too. So um, this is a micro bit of obstacle avoidance car I made for myself. Um, you know, let's watch this video. 
So here's an ultrasonic sensor in the car. And um, when it senses an obstacle in front of it, like now it's walking towards the camera and it's going to go backward and then turn left or right so it won't bump into anything. I once came up with a very good idea that I can put a mop under the car and then let it control free in my room for like um, an hour or two. And it's going to sweep the floor for me so I don't have to do it myself. Okay, so anyways, for grade six, I also created this dancing machine with gears. This is very complicated. Look, this um, and this thing, this purple thing is rotating. It's going to trigger the others and then um, right to this. And when this stroke is um, rotating, this man over here is dancing. Um, so lastly, for this year, I've also made this creation of making a 40 frame and micro bit lantern. So um, it was basically made with this very complicated um, uh, structure again. And then when I tilt the micro bit with different um, motions and it's going to have different colors of light and um, maybe sometimes turn off as well. I actually made this for a um, uh, competition inside the school, but yeah. So last slide. Thank you for listening. So these are my contact information and this is the QR code of my channel. And here, this is my YouTube channel. And these are some videos and these are some further creations I uh, I made um, uh, for, for say, you know, um, I didn't show it in my uh, presentation, but you can go watch it sometimes and please do subscribe because I got only 28 subscribers and I get one every three to four months. And I guess if I want to be someone like Billie Eilish having like one billion subscribers, maybe I'll take centuries and I'm finding a way to long to long live. Okay, just kidding. This is a photo of me having all my, um, all my, uh, creations inside and i think that's it of my presentation so now let me hand over back to dr chang thank you thank you claire and i think uh claire's demonstration speak for everything right uh let's have a quick summary i think uh in stem education um it is very lecture that student learn by doing so it's really really important that student have the tool so uh if they have the tools, then they can create anything. Uh, in class example, um, she failed to create anything at the beginning. I remember that uh, when she first uh, got the 40 frame kits, she just keep asking me how to make something. Uh, she did not know how to make a cube. Um, but now uh, I, uh, I think it is really important that um, someone have a prototype. Uh, once they follow some instruction, they have to f follow the prototype, they make something. And as a teacher, we don't just stop there. We just keep pushing the student. Um, can you make some improvement? Can you fine tune it? Can you make it more precise? And can you extend the idea and make some connection with some other thing uh, like Microbeat, Mike Arduino? Um, so we need to keep challenging students. Okay, so um, here's some reference of my presentation. So uh, that's all for our presentation. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, thank you. I'm, I'm sorry. I was a little caught off guard there. Thank you, Dr. <laughs> Chang and Kim. Uh, and Claire, uh, let me just be the first among many who are ready to give you a round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you that very a, much as well. It was a wonderful presentation. You, you, dem you clearly demonstrated that you, um, you've grown a lot in, your, in these years. When did you start? Um, building? I with started building 40 frame in grade four. In grade four, and you are now in grade seven? Yes. Congratulations. Could you um, once again put the the QR code or, um, to, your, to your YouTube channel up? Because I know there were some people who were very interested in... Oh, um, thank you. ...in uh, seeing that and, and subscribing. Uh, oh, thank you. 
Yeah, I, I for one, am one. So. Oh my um, God, I've grown for four subscribers. Yes, you're going to go beyond that very quickly. Because. Actually, I'm going to tell you a secret. I'm having a competition with my cousin, and we're um, trying to race who has more subscribers, and now I think I'm going to win. First first to 100? Wait, what? First to 100? Um, yes. Okay, that's a great competition. So, all right. Uh, we'd like to... Uh, open it up though for everybody to while you while you put that up I'm going to open it up for people to ask questions of uh, uh, of both um, Dr. Dr. Cheng Wing Kim and Dr. Farida and uh, see if we can get some get a few more bits tidbits of information from them while while we're here. So, folks, if you have a question for either uh, Dr. Farida or Dr. Cheng Wing Kim, um, it, it would be great. Now's a good time. Excuse me, um, Dr. Brewer. Actually, we already get uh, some questions. Thanks by the Hannah from the register room. I, I do have some of those questions, and um, were there some of those in particular you you wanted to answer, uh, or shall I just read? Shall I just choose some? Actually, you can choose some. Okay, I will happily choose some. Um, so one one person asked, is the is the use of technology always relevant for learning mathematics in all places, including in remote areas? Do either of you have uh, thoughts on on that subject? The use of technology. I think um, technology would always help in um, learning uh, in certain way. But uh, even if we don't have technology, we can use simple tools. We can just use um, pebbles uh, or small stone and do some counting. Um, so I think uh, it is uh, more important to have um, the um, learning idea rather than uh, the learning tools. Yes. Um, Actually, in my opinion, I agree with Dr. Uh, Chang that we can use technology even in a remote uh, learning. But if uh, the participant asking um, specifically just like information and um, communication technology, that's different, but somehow um, uh, more of teachers are more focused on the technology, but not the idea of the learning itself. I think uh, even in remote area, we can still also use the technologies. Especially in this time, there's no way to do learning without technology. Yes. It seems like um, it's very hard. Um, That's right. So uh, an another question is: um, is is it? Is it possible to do uh, a STEM or STEAM sort of emphasis for upper grades? People notice that that both of your presentations seem to uh, focus more towards the the elementary school, the the younger children. Are there things that are done um, that are more appropriate for secondary and upper secondary students? And I think uh, class, class example is a very good example for some upper grade uh, activities. Uh, she did it because of the competition. So uh, she tried very hard in learning something new, uh, which, is, uh, which was not taught in um, the classroom. But uh, if we use this idea and uh, change it into a technology classroom, children learn how to code, how to um, do programming, uh, they can learn uh, engineering,
monitoring uh, by connecting um, Arduino with uh, some wire and the LED light and the beadboard uh, and the bread, breadboard. Um, so uh, it is a kind of um, um, technology lesson. And with the 40 frame, the children can uh, break, uh, build strong structure. And uh, it is a math lesson. And uh, with the motor, and they drive the motor and have some motion. So it is a mechanical engineering lesson. So uh, I think um, if we can use some idea like that, and we can uh, have uh, different um, let's lesson uh, in different uh, discipline. So, uh, Dr. Farida. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Pola. Yeah, actually, in, in the case of, for example, my case in water tower projects, it is possible to uh, um, redesign, especially for the higher uh, class. For example, as we just saw about how for the frame, we can use for the frames and also input a robotic there by uh, putting more constraints. So the constraint is not only just uh, for example, the water tower, it can uh, support the water, but how we can uh, make sure that the water can flow into the same area of the um, people, for example, of the house. So in the higher uh, level of education, it can be done. We can also put the uh, robotic there so that uh, it's much more suitable with the engineering and the higher level of education. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one one further question uh, that comes up that I encounter quite often in my discussions with people about the STEM and the STEAM and STEAM frameworks is the difference between STEM and STEAM and what does it mean to in the to include the arts and art aspects? Um, do you both or either of you have? Um, uh, ideas about those subjects, including arts? Yeah, uh, Dr. Brona, probably from my presentations, I show that how actually the arts components can be embedded as one of the answer for the um, the problem the, uh, the, the problem that I found from the data that we conducted the STEM projects. But then I think uh, put the arts, it could help um, the participants to be better uh, understanding in how to visualize the designs and then how to be more creative, more um, uh, detailed. It's also uh, as a component of the arts itself there in uh, my uh, previous presentations. So I think art is very important also as a part of the STEM not only just um, science, uh, engineering, and uh, techniques and mathematics, but the uh, components of art, as we can see, that it could help them in some way to, uh, um, you know what, to make some better visualization and then to more detail so that the mode will be better. Okay, that's, I think, thank you. Thank you. And um, I think uh, Claire can share her example uh, to you because uh, she likes drawing and she's now learning um, uh, some uh, digital tool to draw. And Claire, can you share with us something? Okay, so um, yes, um, as Dr. Chang has stated, I'm trying to draw different tools like um, Photoshop and I sometimes also I, I think everything is about um, creating yourself creating something by yourself actually I first um, create I just create um, something following others like some fan art of some cartoon or maybe any uh, anything that I really like from others and and then I um, usually create my own and um, also, like STEM education, when when I um, create things, as I responded earlier, that I uh, 
all I usually follow some prototypes of others, like um, programming. Maybe I'll have to copy the code, and then after I understood, you know, when you understood a concept, and then you're going to、um, do great in other areas when you、um, when you do make other programs. And、um, I think it's really important to be creative, and also adding art into STEM would be really really great. Do you do you have a few、um, examples of of your work that you wanted to share? And actually,、uh, if you watch her promotion video, uh, uh, it's all maybe、uh, by Claire.、Uh, I just give her some photos、uh, and the PowerPoint slides. She made the、uh, promotion video for me and for herself. And I think. Uh, uh, Hannah,、uh, you can share the promotion video link、uh, to the participant, and、um, and Claire, I think、uh, you can share something more to the other participant, right?、Um, yes, and responding to、um, someone's question earlier, this is the recent artwork that I made.、Um, I created this, and I'm trying to make it with other poses, and also I've also tried drawing myself. Let me show you. Very soon. Wait. And when she drew, I、uh, I saw that、uh, she used some geometric shapes. And、um, over to you. Here is me drawing myself. I'm sorry if it does not look very alike, but I think that's okay. <laughs> It, it it looks much better than anything I would draw of myself. So thank <laughs> you for sharing. <laughs> As Dr. Chang mentioned, I I actually also really like、um, drawing with、um, geometrical shapes. Like、um, I like creating wallpapers for my phone or maybe for my computer. And I think that with、um, with some geometric sh- shapes or maybe some curves or different lines, it's going to make a great、um, pattern. And、Excellent. I think uh, it is uh, really important that、uh, someone has the idea to、uh, create something, to make something.、Um, it can be、uh, some math and technology, or、uh, with some physical tool or some art. Works and you can、uh, see that um, um, once you have this kind of、uh, idea, then、uh, you will have something new in the future.、Uh, I, I was just going to to type something. I was typing something to you, Claire, and I'll just say it out loud. You should submit some of your work to、uh, the Bridges Math Art、um, conferences that are coming up.、Um, they're in the middle of. Um, uh, they're in the middle of accepting papers and and artworks right now, and we have the、um, the Higley、um, uh, children's math artwork、um, collection. We'd love to have you contribute to. So um, um, I'm really glad to have this invitation, and actually, I'm working on a project at, at my school of.、Um, Mathematicians, and I'm planning to do the mathematicians Renee Desgards from French, I think. And then、um, when I saw his、um, most famous discovery, which is the Cartesian geometry, it was made of different、um, like grids with the x and y axis. And when I searched on the internet, I found that somebody、um, draw with the、uh, Coordinate geometry grid, you know, like、um, having those squares, and then they draw minions or maybe,、uh, maybe John. Wait, what, what, what? And Terry, I forgot. And then、um, some very funny cartoon characters, and I'll absolutely look it up. Yes, definitely, do so.、Um, And does anyone have any further questions for our for our panelists today? If not, I'd like to hand this over to Hannah and 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 Mr. Hogul, Mr. Park. You're silenced.
Is anyone the, who have a question to uh, who uh, who who gave the uh, who gave the question already to us? Anyone can they give the question? We turn your mic. Turn on your mic. Is there anybody? We will take questions from anyone in the gallery. Yeah. I think Clara must be 80 years old. <laughs> uh, Something's not right here. I don't know what it is, but I have to think about it. She is a very poised young woman. Quite remarkable. Christoph? Christoph had to leave. So it's us. So without, with, uh, without any other questions, then let's uh, call this uh, special seminar complete. Uh, Mr. Park, do you have uh, parting words or are you, are we finished? 소장님 혹시 끝내시면서 하실 말씀 있으신가요? 이제 대, 이제 행사 마무리하고자 합니다. Is muted. 소장님 마이크 켜주세요. 아두분 너무 수고 많이 하셨고 우리 학생이 너무 너무 잘한 것 같아요. 칭찬해 주시고 앞으로 토디 명예 연구원으로 좀 초빙을 하고 싶네요. 너무 감사합니다. Yeah. Yeah. All those speakers yeah. are amazing. Thank you for everything. <laughs> and actually, yeah, I will I would like to hire Claire to our laboratory <laughs> for the frame. For the frame. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I think she can be a great researcher. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you for everything. Thank you, everyone, and uh, be well. We will see you next month. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So the next event will take place on March 16th, March the 16th. So, and we'll give you the details, more details on our email that email. Uh, so please do subscribe to our email system. And okay, yeah. And uh, have, a, have a great week, uh, have a great day or night. Yeah. Yeah, thank I'm you going for to attending this for uh, two hours. And uh, we are looking forward to seeing you again uh, on March. Yes. Okay. I'll certainly be there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much you. again. And you can Thank also you subscribe so our Free mm -hmm. Brain YouTube Thank channel. You. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 Bye.